trying to keep me down. And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that resides nice and far on the left side of the dial because it feels so right. Hardy har har. Well, once again, the viewers have spoken, and once again, you're sending me headfirst into conspiracy theory land. So today we're going to take a look at something that's admittedly a little bit outside of my area of expertise. We're going to look at some radio oddities. And, uh... Yeah, you know the drill. Put on your favorite tinfoil hat and your best pair of asbestos underwear because we're off to Conspiracyville. Those other bands of radio frequencies, like shortwave and longwave, have long been used by ships and airplanes, and sometimes they're used for public consumption. The BBC used to have a shortwave broadcast but most of these broadcasts are for private military and weather communications. However, for many decades, despite the best efforts of the FCC and pretty much every other country's equivalent thereof, the airwaves have also been home to many pirate broadcasters. Most famously, you've got the European pirate radio stations of the 1960s and 70s who wanted to compete with the usually government-run radio world. Sometimes the competition between the pirates would become dangerous. In May of 1971, Radio North Sea International was firebombed by the competing Radio Veronica. This is the Mebo 2 on fire. SOS, Mayday, 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 SOS. This is an SOS call from Radio North Sea International. Once again, we have trouble. Somebody's bombed us this time. Four miles from the coast of Scheveningen, the radio ship Mebo 2 is on fire. We need help immediately. We need help immediately. Radio North Sea International broadcasts in the medium wave at 220 meters, 1367 kilohertz. Short wave, 6,205 kilohertz, 49 meters, European band. FM channel 44, 100 megahertz. Please stay tuned to these three frequencies for further information. Mebo 2 is now abandoning ship. But of course, it's not the good, legitimate broadcasts that the Archives viewers tend to be interested in, but of course, it's the creepy and seemingly covert ones that everybody seems to love. Back in the late 90s, a tiny British indie record label known as Eardial released a four, ultimately expanded to five, disc box set of various air checks captured by amateur shortwave radio geeks called the Conant Project, named after a check word that was misheard on one of these recordings by the set's producer. Indeed, if you're curious, the original four-disc set can be downloaded for free, legally, sanctioned by Eardial itself, at archive.org. Just search for the Conant Project. Anyway, the bulk of this set consists of broadcasts in which seemingly random streams of numbers are read off, usually by electronic means, and are often bookended by odd electronic noises or snippets of music. Uniform. 
and sometimes these transmissions are jammed by folks with no appreciation whatsoever for a good batch of numbers. Like a moron, I listened to the entire four disc edition of this box set. And I'm sure you're really looking for my opinion. Yeah, to me it sounds like the greatest hits of every crappy industrial or alternative rock group that's just trying to scare their listeners a little. And indeed it makes sense because these clips have been sampled many times by a lot of these bands. So it shouldn't come as any great shock that if you watch these things on YouTube, a lot of times their ever so lovely copyright bots often mistake an amateur recording of a number station for a track from some crappy indie band. Now, of course, the all too pervasive theory on the internet is that these stations must be used for nefarious purposes. And for the only time in archive history, I actually sort of half agree. I think that these could be used for spying purposes, but more than likely, I think, like, maybe drug running purposes. Now, if there really is some sort of government covert thing going on, I think it's more that uh, the governments would want to keep certain frequencies open in case a really bad national or international conflict would arise, and they would need to get info out quickly and accessibly to the military and stuff. Uh, but that's just my take. Okay, I apologize in advance for the bad sound on this, but I figured since we're talking number stations today, I suppose you'd like to know how to potentially decode one of these broadcasts. <sighs> this is going to be a tough one to explain. Uh, to the best of my admittedly light research, the numbers transmission is like a more sophisticated version of the proverbial Little Orphan Annie secret decoder ring. Now, this is done with the use of what is known as a one-time pad which is a single-use alphabetical key used to decipher a message given numerically. The basic system is based on the numerical value given to a letter of a given alphabet. So in our alphabet, A equals 0, on up through Z, which equals 25. So say I just want to say hi to my fellow spy. It's not too hard. H-I, two-letter message. So today's predetermined key is W-F. Our organization is only doing two-letter messages today. Uh, keys can go on indefinitely, though. So the numerical values of WF are 22 and 5. So the outgoing message would be encrypted as such. The two numerical values, the message and key, are added together. So in this case, 22 for W and then 7 for our outgoing H equals 29. And then F, which equals 5, plus our outgoing I, which is 8, is 13. Now, if you have a number that is 26 or greater, this whole system can start over again. So 26 would equal A, 27 would equal B. Or what you could do is you can take what you've got and deduct 26, which would give you a 3, and the 3 is also equal to a D. Again, 29, D, 3, D. The show... 3D, no way. And then 5 plus 8, which equals 13, which needs no uh, further work. That equals an N. So the outgoing message would be DN, the numerical equivalent thereof. Uh, to decode this message, you take the numerical values of your received letters, in this case 3 for D and 13 for N, then you take your key and their corresponding numerical values, remember them, W, F, 22, and 5, and subtract the key values, in this case 22 and 5, from the coded values 3 and 13. So what we do is uh, 3 minus 22, which gives us a negative 19, and then 13 minus 5, which gives us an 8. Now, if you have a negative number, you'll need another key. 
or another code, whatever you want to call it. In this case, negative 19 is an H. Or if you don't want to play that way, you can add a 26, which brings you up to 7, and 7 is the same H that you were trying to get anyway. 8 we don't need to do anything with, that's an I. So, here's our key. Here's our little message. 7 equals H, 8 equals I, hi. It's a lot of work, isn't it? I don't feel so well. I got a tip online that some of the number stations aren't actually there to give out encrypted messages, but are part of some greater conspiracy. <laughs> Imagine that. So, uh, what I heard was that the, uh, 5,500 6,000 kilocycles area of the shortwave band is actually there to give out future winning lottery numbers. Uh, so I figured, oh, what the hell, I'll just buy a lottery ticket and, uh, see if it works, and, uh, Long story short, I won! I won! Yeah! Uh, this has been the final episode of Oddity Archive, suckers! <laughs> I'm out of here! Yes! As well try and finish this stupid episode. Uh, of course, this shortwave band is so much more than just number stations. For example, ever since the late 70s, early 80s, very much still during the Cold War, the Russian government has run a shortwave station known as UVB-76. Now, this station mostly plays the constant, repeated, grating sounds of an alarm, but it is broken up occasionally by the odd military command, and the odd ballet, and the odd 70s oldie. Not that the number stations can't get their groove on when they feel the need. One station that usually gets lumped in with the number stations, despite a complete and utter lack of numbers, is known as the Backwards Music Station. Despite a distinct and utter lack of music, backwards or forwards, and uh, the station is also known as XM, despite a distinct and utter lack of ties to the satellite radio provider. Uh, but this station does have a purpose. It's used to be played underwater in areas with a whale overpopulation problem. That joke seems kind of familiar.
Now, as you may or may not have noticed during the opening of today's show, our usual opening theme may have sounded a little lo-fi to you. Uh, that's because I was taking the playback from our very own shortwave broadcast, um, and it got jammed. Big shock. Anyway, uh, when I was researching this episode, I realized it's actually pretty easy to do your own shortwave broadcasts, so I figured we should have our own station. And, uh, well, it, it, it didn't go real well. It lasted for about 45 minutes. Uh, in fact, our final moment on air is what you heard at the beginning of today's show. Uh, but anyway, for posterity's sake, I decide to tape and film uh, a little bit of our all-too-brief existence on the air. Film because it appeases the archive's advertisers. Uh, so without further ado, let's take an all-too-brief look at the short-lived, late-lamented archive radio. Yeah, close enough. Eddie Money here at KBEN. That's right, KBEN, shortwave's least favorite choice for everybody's least favorite music because they have no taste. Uh, that was Eddie Money there going to his self titled debut album from uh, uh, 1977. And I've really got a special treat for you. It's a lovely afternoon here at KBEN, and I figured we'd do something really cool here. So uh, let me get here real special treat we're gonna truly take a trip back to the early 70s now this next track is straight from an original eight track cassette an original classic from bread yes come on Give me my tape back. Ah! My tape! My tape! My bread album! My tape has ruined my favorite bread album! No! Oh, great. What now? Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I teach you how to properly re-spool an 8-track tape loop. All 12 minutes of it. At 3 and 3 quarter inches per second. You do the math.